We're going to take our text this morning out of Psalm 85. Please turn to Psalm 85. We'll just use one verse of Scripture to get us started. Psalm 85. We'll use verse 6 for our starting place today. Going into revival meetings this week, we want more than meetings. We want to have revival. We want God to meet with us in a mighty and special way that His people are revived, that souls are saved, that it's lasting past Wednesday night, that it continues on in the foreseeable future. You pray for that. You pray for this church. You pray for Brother Ronnie Sile as he comes to be with us. And um, I know that Revival is attainable. God can still bring revival. In Psalm 85, if you'd stand with me for the reading of the Word of God, Psalm 85, verse number 6 says, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? The Lord God, we come before you. We ask you, Lord, for revival. We come before you, God, just, just asking for you to search us and try us. Reveal things to us that we need to change and help us to be willing to repent and turn completely to you and allow you to have your way in our lives, individually, as families, and as a church. Father, that it might spread beyond this church. It might spread through the communities and the area and the counties and the state. God, we ask for you to be with our evangelist as he prepares to come. and Give him the messages to speak. We might have wonderful services and see you do mighty works. But God, this morning, I need your help. We need your help. God, help us to preach your word, your word only. Help us to set the stage for a wonderful week. Help God through your Holy Spirit for your people to accept your word and allow your word to change us and mold us into the image of Jesus Christ. Help us to live anxiously. I'm talking about excitedly. Not worried, not fretting, but excited to be your people. Excited to do kingdom business. And excited about you coming back for us whenever that time is. Father, we just ask for you to do a perfect work through your word today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Our text this morning asks a very important question. Wilt thou not revive us again? You know, we sing a hymn, and hopefully we'll start each service this week with Revive Us Again. Hopefully we'll stand and sing that service, begin, uh, that song beginning each service this week. But we sing that hymn. But did you know that in our heavenly highway there's only three verses? But did you know there's another verse to that hymn? And it says, Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. That's what we need. There's much talk about revival. This morning I want to take some time to analyze what's involved in revival. First of all, what is revival? Revival is not evangelism, although many souls may be saved as a result of genuine revival. Revival is not emotionalism, although there will be expressions of emotion connected with revival when we really get it. Revival is renewal. Revival is renewal of spiritual life, renewal of zeal, renewal of joy, renewal of enthusiasm, renewal of spiritual life. Among, well, for an individual or among a group of people. Revival is needed whenever the people of God have grown cold. I'd like for us to consider some symptoms of revival's need, complacency, self-satisfaction, or satisfaction with the way things are. <laughs> if that's you, you need revival. Lack of, lack of concern for the lost. I got mine, my family's got ours. Not really all that much worried about everybody else. Need revival, if that's your attitude. Hiding sin or covering personal sin. 
thinking you're getting away with it because everybody else don't know it. God knows it. And our iniquities hinder our prayers before the Lord. Our sins hinder our prayers. How about animosity toward other Christians? Animosity or hard feelings toward other Christians. We need revival then. Having an unforgiving spirit. We need revival. Being filled with pride. We need revival. Any condition of spiritual standing where we are less than we were before. In other words, there's a word for that, backslidden. A lot of people don't like that word used in the New Testament. But when we can remember a time when we were more fervent, when we were more excited, when we were more zealous for God than we are right now, we need revival. There are dangers in the need of revival because oftentimes spiritual deterioration comes without our awareness. It has a way of sneaking up on you. You don't realize you need revival. I mean, you think you're doing pretty well. You're sitting on a pew. It has a way of sneaking up on you. Do you remember Samson? Samson, a strong man before God. God's Spirit would come upon him, and he had strength, and, uh, supernatural strength, that he was able to do things. And his lover, his girlfriend, kept trying to find the source of his strength, and he kept playing with her and telling her wrong things, and, 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 and she would uh, awaken him and say, the Philistines be upon you, and he would just... He'd just get up and whoop them and leave. And finally he told her the one thing that he shouldn't have said. And, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee. And he got up thinking he was going to whoop them and leave again. And the Bible says something very sad. He knew not that God's power had left him. He knew not that he did not have God's power any longer. It has a way of just slipping up on you unawares. And Samson, you know the rest of that story. He was captured, defeated, used in the grinding house like a mule, a beast of burden. He's not the only example. I remember the disciples. The disciples had received power from Jesus Christ to heal and to cast out demons. And yet there was one occasion when they couldn't do it. You remember that? Right after the transfiguration when James and John and, and, and Peter, uh, along with Jesus, came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and, a, and a father comes running up to him. And, and, and in a desperate need, he had his son. And his son, his son was having uh, uh, fits and, 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 and seizures. And, and he was demon-possessed. And he said, I brought my son to your disciples for help, for, for deliverance from this demon. And they could not. Let me, let me turn and read some of that. Matthew 17. Matthew 17. This is most interesting. Verse 14 says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic, and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire, and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. That's pretty pointed, isn't it? He's talking to his closest followers. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you, howbeit this kind goeth out. Goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. They had lost their power, but they were unaware that it was gone. Jesus told them that it was because of their unbelief. Often the condition of our heart 
is such that we're not aware of our need for revival when it is at its very greatest. That's all I'm saying to us. It has a way of slipping up on us. The flesh will fight against revival. For to have revival, we must admit that we have a need. And that goes against our old fleshly nature. I don't know if you've been keeping up, but do you see how the last few sermons have been building up to this one each Sunday morning? So what kind of revival do we need? Revival means a return to life or a renewal, regeneration of spiritual life. Not that we've lost our salvation. We just need renewed. We just need that zeal, that thirst and that hunger back for God, that that zealousness, that joy. You know, Jesus declared to the church at Sardis, Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Revelation chapter 3. I declare unto you, this nation has a name that she lives, dying fast. This nation, America, has a name as a Christian nation. We're no longer living in a Christian nation, my friend. We're living in a post-Christian nation. We say it in our pledge, one nation under God. Our coins have on it, in God we trust. But I say unto you, it looks like most of the nation, it would be in money we trust, or even in government we trust, but it certainly don't look like in God we trust. We need revival. What's true for the nation is also true for the communities. Communities are made up of church people like us. We're where revival is going to have to begin. It's not going to begin in the state house or the white house. It's going to begin in the church house. It's got to begin with us. To the church at Laodicea, he calls upon them to repent. They thought they had need of nothing. They were rich and increased with goods and need of nothing. And Jesus pro- proclaimed that they didn't even know that they were wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's when he said, because you're not cold or hot. I would that you were cold or hot. But because you're lukewarm, you're nauseating, and I spew you out of my mouth. You see, the imagery there is that at nearby Hierapolis, they had hot springs rejuvenating to sit in those hot springs of water and soothe the muscles. But by the time the water was piped into Laodicea by aqueduct, it wasn't hot anymore. It was just lukewarm. And nearby Colossae had, was known for springs of cool, refreshing water. You know how refreshing when you're hot and thirsty a cold drink of water is. But again, by the time it was piped into Laodicea by aqueduct, it wasn't cold anymore. It was just lukewarm. Now, I don't know how many of you like lukewarm water, but I certainly don't. I just want to spew it out of my mouth. It's nauseating. And that's exactly what Jesus says. The church there at Laodicea seemed to be full of professors, but not possessors of the salvation of God. Do you know what? It really opened my eyes. Do you know what? I heard Billy Graham say that it was his fear that as much as 75% of the church today, I'm not talking about this church particularly, 75% of the church today may be lost. He based that on the parable of the soils and the seed. Only 25% fell on good ground and produced fruit. And and he said he feared that as much as 75% of the church today, isn't that a staggering number? Jesus rebuked the church at Ephesus 
for having left their first love. He said, I know your works and your labor and your patience and you recognize them that are false teachers. But they did not burn with love for Christ any longer. They had left their first love. They had grown cold in their love for Him. Do we burn in our love for the Lord? Do we burn in our love for His Word? Do we burn in our love for His church and His people? Do we burn in our love for sweet fellowship, one with another, particularly with Him, but then with His people as well? Some folks are members of the church in name only. They're not interested in being involved in ministry. Others are satisfied with the way things are and they see no reason for change. Still others are too concerned about their own agendas and, uh, you know, to see the, the needs that are out there. We need to cry out to God, Wilt thou not revive us again? We need revival. That should be our cry. God, it's me. It's my family. It's my home. It's my church. God, we need revival. Let it start with us and let it spread to our sister churches and let it spread to our communities and let it spread through our state and maybe our whole nation might catch on. We need a revival that will rekindle old fires. Revive us again means that there have been revivals before. The Christian life is made up of many beginnings. To illustrate the life of a believer, it's not like holding on to a hot air balloon and we just continue to rise until we get to Jesus and we're with Him. No, there are peaks and valleys, aren't there? There are mountaintops and then there's valleys to walk through. We need a revival that will rekindle old fires. Do you remember better days? Days of dedication to the Lord. Days of dedication to His work. Days when you came to church excited and expecting to see God move in great ways? Do you remember when Sunday morning wasn't a drag to get out of bed and to get ready, but you couldn't wait? You were up before the alarm clock. You were silently praying, or getting ready for the day to God to make me ready that you could speak to me today. Don't let me be a hindrance. I want to I be there. I want to get what you have for me. Hey, do you remember that? Days when you wouldn't think of missing church for a ball game or some frivolous activity. When you didn't look for some excuse why not to go to church or why not to serve the Lord. You were just excited to do it. We need revival. That will restore joy and victory to the child of God. Too many defeated Christians today. We talked about circumstance a couple weeks ago, didn't we? It's leading right up to this. Too many defeated Christians today. Too many discouraged Christians today. Too many backslidden Christians today. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'll just turn and read that one too. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8. And I'll begin reading verse 8. Chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading and Nehemiah, which is the governor, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our God. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We need revival where God will give us a song in our hearts once again. We've been practicing. If y'all don't know this, we've been practicing on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights for group special. Group special. 
during the revival. We've been excited about practicing. We've been diligent about practicing. Now you come back tomorrow night and you say if our practice did any good. But here's the point. You can come back tonight and get in on that deal. If God gives you a new song in your heart today, you come back tonight and practice with us and we'll be glad for you to sing with us. The joy of the Lord is found on the road to restoration. You see, in that context in Nehemiah, Ezra gathered the people and read to them from God's book and explained the words and their meaning. Once the people understand, really understood, they wept. God's word was opening their eyes to the way they had failed him. Nehemiah quickly reminded them of who the Lord is. They could delight in the joy of the Lord because He is a forgiving God, a gracious God, a compassionate God. That's the God that I'm talking about today. Too many today think because they say the word God, they're talking about the same person. No. You look at what's going on on college, college campuses. Allah is not the God I'm preaching about today. Allah is a God of vengeance and hate. They're chanting death to Israel, death to America. I'm talking about Jehovah God, the one who loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son for you that through him you didn't have to perish but could have everlasting life. I'm talking about the God that don't want you to perish. The God that says, I have no delight in the destruction of the wicked and the death of the wicked, but that the wicked would turn from his way and turn to him and receive his goodness and his blessing. That's what God wants. That's Jehovah God. And that's the God I'm talking about today. How can we have revival? Only God can bring revival. He alone is the source. Our text said, wilt thou, wilt thou not revive us again? Wilt thou, O oh God, See, it's impossible for us to just schedule and say, we're going to have revival. No, we're going to have meetings. God willing. But if we meet the conditions, we can have revival. The conditions are to humble ourselves before the Lord. Prostrate ourselves before Him. Confess our sin, repent of that sin, and beg Him to meet with us this week. What we must do is pray for God to grant revival. We must face up to spiritual realities. We need to see ourselves as we are. Be honest. We need to acknowledge God for who He is and quit playing games. We need to see our sin for what it is and quit excusing it and instead confess it, repent of it, and forsake it. We must desire to be revived. Usually we don't want it bad enough to make a difference. Isaiah 55 verses 6 and 7 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to, and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. That's good news right there, my friends. God wants to bring revival upon those who genuinely seek it. In uh, Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Are we willing to meet the... Put the work in. I think God wants us to have revival. We've established that we need revival. We need personal revival. 
That means individuals getting right with God. We need family revival. That means families getting back to a place where they need to be. That means church revival. That'll come when individuals and families get right. Church, a major priority in our lives. Our church must become a major priority in our lives once again. When we love everyone in this church and not just certain ones. When we love our Lord and His work. We love His church and His people more than anything else. Revival will come. Revival is not turned on and off like a water fountain. But if we meet God's conditions... He'll bestow revival upon us. There are souls that need to be saved. There are people that need to be ministered to. Who will do it? How many would die and go to hell because we grew complacent and self-satisfied? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Will you bow with me? Your Father, we stand in need of revival. We stand here calling upon you. Confessing our sin. Repenting of our sin. Asking for your help. To turn our back on that sin. God, we're heartbroken over the condition of our land. Our society. The way she's headed, we need you back. We recognize it's got to start in little congregations just like this one. God, revive us. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto us the zeal and the fervency for your word and work, for your church and your service. Lord, <clears throat> Father, we lift up our evangelist. Brother Ronnie Sile, we ask you to prepare in his heart and in his mind the words that you want preached and use him, God. Use him to deliver those words through your Holy Spirit and minister those words to every one of us that they may change us. Father, we lift up the lost, the lost round about us. I thank God for being a part of a mission-minded church that we send missionaries and monies all over the world. But God, don't let us sit lazily by here and let folks go to hell from the shadow of our steeple. I ask God for you to give us a burning desire for you, a burning love for you, for your word for your work, for your church, for your people, but also to see the lost saved. We're asking God, won't you come this week and revive us again? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.